Hey you all, Carpetbagger here along with Danny who doesn't want to be in the video. <laughs> you may remember Danny, he was he ate a bunch of spicy chicken wings and threw up in a restaurant. Unfortunately, we're at a, we're at a different restaurant, the Salt Box. This is some sort of local seafood joint where they go bring you fresh seafood. This seafood was alive this morning. Someone murdered it, put it in a boat, brought it back. Brought it back here to whatever town we're in. What town are we in? Durham. Durham, Durham, North Carolina. So we're about to eat some serious seafood here. Hopefully Danny doesn't puke in the restaurant like he normally does. Follow us. <laughs> All right, I ordered the bone-in croaker. I was originally worried that was code for frog, but uh, apparently it's some sort of fish, so we'll see what comes out. So what did, what did you get there, Danny? Grouper. You got this nice little cuts of grouper here. I got the, the croaker, which is served with horrifying heads on it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it looks delicious though. Mm, that's good. Here we go. Eleven feet, eight inches. That really does look like a small bridge when you look at it. You've arrived. Right, we are here in Durham. This is one of the most notorious bridges in the country. It is the 11 foot 8 bridge, also known as the can opener. It's only 11 foot 8 inches tall, very, very short bridge. So trucks can go under there and they get their top sheared off. RVs get their top sheared off. Some bigger trucks just run and smack right into the bridge. It's an average of one accident a month, which is incredibly high. And actually one individual set up uh, cameras here and they are very, the videos are very popular on the internet. People love watching trucks hit this bridge. You may have seen a few yourself, but um, yeah, there's actually, you can see the cameras over here. You know, there's one of the cameras there to capture the accident. So this is not put up by any sort of official source. This is just a guy who wanted to film all the car accidents. You can see right there is the other camera. I don't know, this guy looks like he might be a little bit, a little bit too high, a little bit too high. Oh! Okay, he was good. <laughs> this Best Buy G Squad truck, it's getting ripped. Let's watch this. Oh, sorry buddy, you're done for. You're more than 11 foot eight, I can just see it. I can just see, no! Oh! Okay, he made it. This is actually an old railroad bridge and it has been struck so many times by so, different, so many different vehicles, they had to protect it. So they built this massive bar right here, this barricade. Instead of like rerouting traffic or raising the bridge, they put in this shield to smash trucks to keep them from hitting the bridge. If you look pretty close there, you can see it's actually bent and bashed and ripped. No, 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 no. <laughs> Oh, this is really intense. All right, there's a place I've wanted to come back to for quite some time. We're at the Angus Barn kicking booth, the self kicking machine. Get up here, Danny, kick yourself. You gotta get in, you gotta stand with your butt pointed towards the machine. Make sure you're turning it the right way the way it shows you, otherwise it'll act kick you in the kidneys. Did that work? Oh. Why is it going so slow? Don't turn around, it'll kick you in the crotch. All right, for some reason it just doesn't seem to be going right. It doesn't seem, the boots don't seem to be building up enough velocity to give a good kick. I don't know if they've disabled it or if it's broken or, I don't know how this could possibly be conceived as being dangerous. And maybe it's just me, but this lighthouse looks like I may be leaning to one side a little bit.
All right, I'm currently in Wilson, North Carolina. And the reason I came here is to check out Whirly Gig Park. Now, a Whirly Gig is a kinetic sculpture, a, a piece of metal artwork that actually moves with the wind. And these particular Whirly Gigs were created by a man named Wallace Simpson. He died in 2013. And I was here, I came here maybe about a decade ago. Um, they used to be on his private property. Um, they were getting kind of old, rusty, covered with weeds and vines. So the city had decided, and it actually was before he died, they made the decision that they were going to move the Whirly Gigs here to a public park so that the city could maintain them and enjoy them. And it's really awesome to see him here, cleaned up, polished, with a fresh paint job. And if you just look, these things are massive. So let's, let's check these out. Now, we don't have a lot of wind today, which means you guys can hear me, but unfortunately the whirly gigs are not in full action. Yeah, if it was a good wind, these things would be moving, spinning in every single direction. And it looks like they're gonna be turning the old railroad station into a whirly gig museum. One funny thing is, like, we know the story behind the Whirly Gigs. It was Wallace Simpson who made them. He made them out of, you know, pieces of sign metal that, that was in his workshop. But actually, for the longest time, his, uh, his sculpture park was was the creation of an urban legend because no one knew who he was. And the legend was that his daughter had died in a car accident while high on acid, and he created the sculptures to represent what it was like to be on acid in remembrance of his daughter. And they could, the locals referred to his uh, artwork as Acid Park, which is a debunked legend. There's no truth to it whatsoever. So I'm on my way home from the, I think they call it the Research Triangle in uh, there in the middle of North Carolina where my friend uh, Danny lives. I've known Danny for quite some time. Uh, 10 years ago, I started working at um, my current job and I think he started working there just a little bit after me and we became really good friends um, just right off the bat, right after meeting him. Um, so we were good friends at work, um, good friends away from work. Um, you know, we'd get together as families. Um, he has a daughter that's a uh, couple years older than Anna, but they grew up together. Um, you know, me and my wife don't have that much family in, uh, in North Carolina. So it's almost like, you know, Danny's family and our family were almost kind of one big family, but it's sadly, um, well, sadly for, you know, for me, but, um, you know, it's a plus for his family. His wife um, is a chemist and she is currently completing her doctorate um, at one of the very impressive colleges out here in the middle of North Carolina. Um, and she's getting her doctorate and she's gonna be a big, big scientist. <laughs> it's really exciting, but they had to move away from the mountains um, in order for her to accomplish that. But um, always try, um, you know, they always come visit us when they're visiting family. And um, he was off this week, so I decided to drive up for a day and spend, spend some time with him and go on some adventures um, with him. So always good to see. I uh, got a couple hour ride back home and then um, Thursday. Thursday is when I start my next 
big road trip and I've decided to keep it a surprise um, I think it'll be fun I think you guys um, will enjoy it and you will find out very very soon where I will be um, so keep stay tuned um, what else what else I've got postcards sent out so if you are uh, on patreon um, you should be getting your postcard in a couple of days uh, if that doesn't arrive let me know it's easy for postcards to get lost in the mail uh, there's a good story about a postcard that was lost in the mail for almost 30 years and then finally arrived uh, where it was supposed to go but um, yeah if you don't get those postcards let me know um, anyone interested on uh, getting a postcard um, uh, I usually send them out around the around the 20th 21st if anyone wants to get a postcard next cycle uh, just you know put your donation down uh, before the first the first is when patreon charges uh, the fee um, and then I will send them out then for that for that pay period um, appreciate it uh, thank you guys for allowing me to do this um, everyone out there every person that watches this helps keep me afloat um, but special thanks of course to my patr patrons on patreon um, they've really really helped uh, prop me up to be able to do this uh, but of course I thank every one of you um, for giving me your eyeballs well, that sounded a little weird <laughs> looking at me with your eyeballs um, giving this channel views subscribers and and this goodwill in general um, I will see you soon from a mystery location and for now this one's in the bag